Hello, welcome back to Bet Builders on Free Super Tips. I'm, of course, Statman Dave, and today I'm joined by a special guest, David Cartledge from ESPN. We're going to give you all the bets for game week four, but before we do that, we've got a quick question for you, David. Of course, the Premier League has started. Which team has surprised you the most, good and bad? I think, without a doubt, in terms of good, it's been Everton. You know, um, I think, you know, they brought some good players in. So people are going to be like, oh, is it really that surprising? Well, you know, you look at other teams like Chelsea who have taken time to gel with their new players. Everton have just hit the ground running. James looks like he's been running that team for the past few years. So I think that's me definitely Everton. In terms of bad, I think Sheffield United. And maybe it's credit to them that they've set the bar so high for themselves. They've been such a good Premier League side that now when you see them like this, just not really finding their rhythm, not really having the energy what they used to, that, you know, they're not playing so well. So we'll see. But I think they'll kick on. Interesting. We're going to dive into that a little bit later on, both Everton and Sheffield United. We're also going to touch on, of course, Pep Guardiola. Is he a fraud? Is he finished? We're going to talk about Chelsea's defence and their attack. And also, can Ole Gunnar Solskjaer once again beat Jose Mourinho? If you want to check out more free super tips, go over to their website, freesupertips.com. They've got all the action over there for game week four, but of course, gamble responsibly. Now I think it's time to look back on our bets from last week. Of course, you weren't involved in that. But again, we picked some winners. Oh, all right. Pressure on me, then. Pressure on Pressure you this on week. Me. The Jeez. first guest to score. We're looking you to open up the scoring, a debut okay. goal. So let's take a look at the bets right now. We picked a winner in the Manchester United game. Bruno Fernandes, any time, of course, a Manchester United win and over 2.5 goals. There's a lot of goals in that game, but we'll talk about United a little bit later on. And FST picked out a Newcastle or drawn at under three goals in the game. Great bets. But now I think it's time to talk about our first game of the weekend. That, of course, is Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Both teams come into this game in a little bit of wayward form. Chelsea, of course, drawing 3-3 with West Brom. And Crystal Palace having a little bit of a slow start after impressing against Manchester United. Let's talk Chelsea first. They look a bit of a mess at the back. Mistakes from Marcus Alonso, Thiago Silva, and yep. potentially even Rhys James for that last goal. They've got to sort that out, haven't they? Yeah, there's a lot going on at the moment with Chelsea. I think there's a lot that they have to get right. You look at every position. They've got a new goalkeeper. They've got new defenders. They've got new midfielders. They've got new attackers. So there's a lot going on there. And the pressure is on Lampard to try and gel everybody together. And we said about Everton, you know, and how they've got things, you know, they've hit the ground running. Chelsea just haven't had it like that. So it's understandable. So I understand the criticism to an extent, but I think you've got to give them a little bit more time to get together. The question is, how long has Lampard actually got that time? That's the interesting side. Is it player focus? Is it Lampard focus? Mm. Get into the comments below and give you our thoughts. Should Lampard be sacked or is it Ben Chilwell coming back into the team? Played 66 minutes against Spurs. Mm -hmm. Is he the guy to turn this around? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's one of those decisions where you look at, that's an easy one to make. Other things are a little bit more difficult, you know, where to play Havertz, you know, Werner's role. Those are a little bit more difficult, things that will take time. But Chilwell's a, a plug and player. Get him in straight away, get him bedded in and try and just get a set back four because they've just not had that really. It's always chopping and changing. We've got another, again, we've got a new goalkeeper now as well. So there's more to think about there. So try and get that set back four and goalkeeper and then you can build from there. It's almost that's exactly what Roy Hodgson builds his teams on that setback for and goalkeeper. Tariq Mitchell has been impressive this season mm -hmm. from left fullback. Do you expect him to stay in the 11 through the season? I think he'll stay in the 11. I think if you look at the way Palace have, have got trust in players, you know, that come through, that, you know, they're younger players as well, they're happy to do that. So I think he's one of those who will stay in. And also, you look at Eze as well. I think, you know, if they can get him bedded in, uh, working with Zaha, you could just see little glimpses of their relationship. And if they get on the same wavelength, that could actually spell a lot of trouble. And Hodgson does like his side to sit in, and they can sit in a little bit more, but with those attacking players, that means that they can break on the counter and just have that little bit more quality. Could be dangerous on that left-hand side, Eze and Zaha. Mm -hmm. Could be dangerous for someone like Rhys James. Let's take a look at your bets first, David. Mm -hmm. What have you got for this first game? So we've got both teams to score and yep. Werner any time. What are your thought process going through here? Yeah, absolutely. Chelsea have got a lot of firepower. Like we said, they can get goals from all over. With Palace, again, like I said, I think they've got a few more attacking pieces now that interest me. Again, Eze, Zaha, I can see that relationship. I can see them causing... Chelsea just a little bit, you know, the confidence isn't quite there yet. They can take advantage of that. Uh, and I think Werner, you know, if you look, he got his goal against Spurs. The confidence is just coming in with him. He's starting to just get a feel of things. So I can see him actually going, getting a little bit streaky over the next few weeks. Absolutely. We've had him in the bet every single week. So it's about <laughs> time for Timo Werner to score. Brother Timo, you're listening to us. Get that first goal. Both teams to score is an interesting one. Wilfred Zaha, of course, in great form this season. Mm -hmm. On penalties as well. That could be an approach. We've seen Chelsea be quite sloppy. So I, quite, yeah. I kind of like that bet. Now let's move over to my bet for this game. Uh, we're going to go for Chelsea to win the game and Werner to score. We went a little bit boring. We went a little bit safe. I think Chelsea, after midweek, yep. they're going to be hurting. 
And I also think Naverna to, to score any time is a great shout. You know, Timo Werner has the pace. I thought he took his goal really well. The first touch, how he set himself across the keeper. Mm -hmm. He's a top striker. So I saw some questions about how he finishes and in terms of whether he's going to be a long-term finisher. And I, I just don't really understand that. I think he's got that in him. I think he does look, he's got those poacher qualities, but he's also somebody who can create a goal out of nothing as well. Absolutely. You know, if you take any of the Leipzig goals he scored, the variety of how he scored some of those goals. Remember one against Union Berlin where mm -hmm. he came in from the right-hand side, a little bit of a flick on and fired it into the roof of the net. Yeah. Very different to a side footed finish or the finish that we saw at the edge of the box mm -hmm. against Spurs. So I like that as well. That looks really good. So let's go to FST's bet builder for this game. They've gone Chelsea to win the game over 2.5 goals in the match. That's probably a given in a way, to be mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. Most goals in the second half. And Wilfred Zaha, anytime 16 to 1. That is a bet that you could get on, of course. The Zaha, we spoke about the penalties yep. and how that could happen. Most goals in the second half. Chelsea, of course, coming in alive after they went down. Mm -hmm. I like the look of yeah, that. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah, it's good odds as well. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks better than Six, our bets altogether. So we'll see one, if yeah, uh, yeah. FST can get another win. But before, I think it's now time to talk about the big dogs. Everton in the Premier League. They were top of the league. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance that they can be this season's Leicester City? Or are Leicester City going to be that? Come on, this season's going to be wild. It's already shown so far that anything could happen. And I think it's one of those years where I think if something crazy is going to happen again, like a Leicester situation, it's very much this one. Um, you look at the big teams as well, they've got problems. You know, there's only Liverpool who are honestly that far ahead, so eh, who knows? Who knows? There's only uh, <laughs> four teams with 100% record in the Premier League. Liverpool, Leicester City, of course Everton, mm -hmm. and the other side, Aston Villa. Surprising, but they've only played two games so far. I think we've got to talk about one guy though, James Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. He's changed things for, for this team. He's yeah. added that spark, that creativity in terms of big chances created in the Premier League. Only Harry Kane has created more big chances mm -hmm. of real quality. How impressed have you been with him? And, you know, obviously as a La Liga specialist, mm. did you expect him to just start straight away in the Premier League, adapt in such a simple way? I mean, I can never doubt his footballing qualities. He's an unbelievable footballer. And I think he's already shown he's probably one of the best midfielders in the league. Absolutely. I think he's already shown enough that. It was always about adaptation, just, you know, if he's going to get a few kicks. I know it's, you know, the temperature, things like that. You know, you know they, they, it, it is a factor for these players mm. just settling in. So I thought that might be a concern. In terms from a footballing point of view, Never any doubt. He's come and he's shown, please, he'll laugh off some of these opposition where he has, these people who are just running around after him. He's so quick of thought as mm -hmm. well as that technical ability. So that will always keep him an advantage and a few steps ahead of other teams. Talking about managers with a few steps ahead, I think Graham Potter's shown that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. The performance against Manchester United was, was sensational. Yeah. They deserved to come out with the three points. I thought tactically they got it absolutely spot on. And as well with Chelsea, they played Chelsea, they lost 3-1. Again, I thought they played quite well in that game. Is this a time, is it going to be another game where they perform well but don't win? I think that could be the question marks for Graham Potter. Uh, that's where it's going to be. I think, you know, even if they, I know it's a long time away, but say they went down, you can just see them looking at them going, oh, they weren't really that bad across the course of the yeah. season. And they're going to have so many games like this. And that's the interesting thing. So he's working really, really hard with that group, or he has. You look at somebody like, say, Eddie Howe, who spent a lot of money at Bournemouth trying to get things together, and he's still got praise. Potter is doing an unbelievable job. Brighton aren't spending big money. Yes, they're spending some money, but you look at the unit he's got, and like you say, I think tact from a tactical point of view, there's not many people, I think, who could, who could wipe the floor with him. He's a very intelligent manager. I think that could be the, the difference, maybe, in this game. United had a lot of problems with the, both of the wing-backs. Yep. You know, Tariq Lamptey attacking down the right, and then the back post moved to Solly Marsh, we saw for that goal, but that happened a few times. Yep. If Everton do play a back four, could be a bit of a problem. Do you expect yep. Carla to go three or four? I think he'll go four. And I think you made a great point because I think Dinier, he really likes, if you look at the way they're playing this system, they do like to cut inside so it allows Dinier all the flank to run into. So that's something that could be exposed by Brighton. Could be, could be. David, it's time to now look at the bets. Mm -hmm. Let's dive into yours first and see what you got for this game. So we've got Everton to win the match and Richarlison yep. to score any time. Richarlison, yep. a current penalty taker, yep. do you believe. So that's you know, give that a bit of, uh, of thought there. But you think Everton over... Uh, Brighton in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Everton will see it through. I think they've just got too much quality. The confidence is there. Um, and I think with Richarlison, you know, all the focus has been on Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Rightly so. He's been yeah. fantastic. But you look at the work that Richarlison, that, you know, again, goals are coming there with him. You just see it. Just, mm. you know, I think he's another one who could just get, go on a little streak. And uh, yeah, I think it's about his time to score. I think it's quite interesting as well with Hamez stepping inside and then mm. could be looking for that back post. You know, we've seen him look quite a lot for Calvert-Lewin, but maybe it's now going to be that new through ball to the back stick. And you're yep. thinking... 
Digne as well, pushing forward. Decent bet, 21 to 10. Yep. Now let's take a look at my bet of the game. I've gone a little bit wild here. We've got Everton draw, double chance. I'm just protecting myself there because I do respect Brighton. I think they're a very <laughs> good football inside. Mopay to score any time. His XG looks very, very good this yep. season. He's on penalty, so I expect him to grab a goal. Uh, Calvert-Lewin at any time as well. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at non-penalty XG, yes, we bring advanced metrics out on this show. He is number one in the Premier League. Of course, because of Hamid Ro James Rodriguez, Digne, Richarlison. I think there's a lot of quality in that midfield that are created and Calvert-Lewin, he is a poacher. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's a poacher. And I think, you know, we've looked at him since he's emerged on the scene. He was always somebody who you'd associate with hard work, with graft, who plays a system role. Yeah. You look at him now and that poacher is coming out. It's, it's really interesting because he always had the talent. We mm -hmm. always saw, it does kind of, you know, gear you to if you work hard in modern football, eventually it will click for you. Yeah, as we're seeing with Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw some people say, oh, he's, he's not a natural goal scorer. It was like, he hasn't been around the league too long. He's just carving his way in, mm. feeling things, and then now you can see he's playing a big role. Yeah, and he'll play a big role in the uh, over 3.5 goals in this yeah. game as well. This is going to be a goal fest. I've called it the uh, hipsters game of the weekend. Tactically, Carlo Ancelotti versus Potter. Now let's take a look at FST's bets for this week, the bet that they have built for this game. Everton to win the game, Calvert-Lewin to score any time, both teams to score. This is quite similar to... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit of the less extreme version of my bet, I'd have to say. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, they've been a bit more reserved there. No, again, this is a nice looking bet. You, you can see all this completely happening. Absolutely. So we spoke about this game. I think it's time to move on to the next game. And on the list, it's going to be Leeds United versus Manchester City. Teacher versus pupil. Mm -hmm. I remember a really good game. Athletic Bilbao versus Barcelona. Bielsa mm. versus Guardiola. Talk to me about that. Oh, I just remember the rain. Just absolutely hammering down. And it, it was just had the feel of an epic straight away. It was under floodlights. They always, they always say games at Sam Ahmed's or Athletic Bilbao when the floodlights are on and the rain's coming down, it's always special. And that was one of the most memorable games uh, that I've seen. And I remember uh, Pep Guardiola saying around that game, Bielsa was the best coach in the world. Um, it, and that's fair, you know, it's the, his idol. Um, but yeah, it was a fantastic game. Ando Herrera on that night as well. And it was just, a, it was a real, real epic. Real, <laughs> real good game. And the, the marking of Lionel Messi as well from Bielsa, <laughs> rotating a man marker, get a yellow card, then come again. Yeah. That you mentioned before we started recording this. Yeah, absolutely. They just took turns in, uh, in going after Lionel, you know, instead of just putting one man on them all game and then potentially taking the two yellows, they just decided to basically take turns in, in shutting them down. And, and, and some of the manners, uh, some of the manner that they actually uh, did shut them down, you know. Is that going to happen against <laughs> Sterling, against Kevin De Bruyne? I think there's one of those guys that they got to really focus on there. But I was really impressed by Leeds last weekend mm. against Sheffield United. I thought they were a lot more resolute, a lot more less expansive, and I thought they controlled the game better. Yeah. Once again, I think if you watch them regularly in the Championship last season, they had that about them. They weren't just all guns and guns blazers, and people go, "Oh, it'll be all societally." You know, this is going to be what, six, seven. No, I think you know they have got the capability now of shutting Nick down. They're still learning a little bit in the back. You can see, you know, they brought in Diego Llorente as well. You know, extra centre back. So they are looking at that. They want to tighten things up. Um, so yeah, yeah, you know, I think when they want to buckle down, they can. Well, again, they're the best defensive record in the championship. Yep. There's 27 goals conceded, the fewest in the league. So they've got that potential there. On the flip side, Man City have just conceded five goals for mm -hmm. the first time in Pep Guardiola's managerial stint in the Premier League. Yep. They look really open. Yeah, they look all over the place. They, you know, they're one of the big clubs that I look at. There's several right now who are just, you know, all over the place. They haven't really got hold of an identity of the, you know, the direction that they're going. Uh, they just brought in Ruben Dias as well. You know, so again, it's going to be another player coming in, another young player in the back line. You know, they brought John Stones in as well, of course, a couple of years ago. So he's going to have to integrate, get the grips with the system. How long will that take? How many bloopers is he going to have? You know, so he's got to have real mentality, I think, to fit into this Pep team. Yeah. But as well, tactically, Pep got it completely wrong for me. They started with that four-two-three-one, and I thought they had some semi-decent control mm. with the two defensive midfielders. But as soon as uh, Liam Delap, not Rory Delap, Liam Delap came on, of course, son of Rory Delap, they went to this weird four-one-one-four shape, and yeah. it was just so easy for Leicester to dominate midfield. You know, you go back and look at a few of those goals. There's no pressing in midfield. It's so easy for Leicester to play through. Yeah. A lot of the penalties came in the channels, yeah. but they have to play the pass. It's, it's a problem with Pep that everybody knows about, you know, especially, you know, this is the worrying sign. He definitely does it on big European nights, but when he's doing it in, in Premier League games, you know, randomly, suddenly overthinking it, it's hard for players as well to, to keep switching systems. If you're going through three, four systems in a game, even if it is to combat what the opposition are doing as well, maybe change it once, twice, okay. But he seems to change it quite a lot of times. Players are pulled out of positions that they're maybe used to, and that causes a lot of trouble and a lot of confusion, even if you're a good player. Yeah, even if you're a good player, like Phil Foden looked very, very poor last weekend. Is Phil Foden in your bet, though, to score any time? Let's take a look at it right now, because it's not in my bet, and he is not in your bet. Both teams to score in the first half, yep. yes. Kevin De Bruyne, any time. Again, 
We're banging on about penalties because this season in the Premier League, penalties have been absolutely everywhere. I think mm-hmm. we're on course for 60 penalties yeah. in the Premier League. So you could back Kevin De Bruyne. But also maybe you're thinking Kelvin Phillips has got to deal with a lot of space. De Bruyne uh, can move around him. I think Phillips is going to have his work cut out. He's going to have to be tracking a few different people. And I think with the game, I think I can see the game inevitably getting stretched. And again, that's why I've gone for the two goals in the first half. I can just see both teams feeling each other out. And in most games, I think teams will be cagey. I think in this one, they're just both, both going to be quite Absolutely open. Fine. Maybe in the second half, they'll maybe tighten it up and say, right, we, we can't <laughs> play at 100 miles an hour all game. So this is why I can see it getting stretched. I can see De Bruyne getting a lot of space as well. Maybe Leeds getting caught upfield, having to make fouls. De Bruyne free kicks, De Bruyne penalty. So yeah, yeah. No, no, 100%. I kind of uh, I back that De Bruyne. But we backed De Bruyne too much and he let me down last weekend. <laughs> Let's take a look at what, what I'm going with in this game. Go Man City to win the game. I think they'll have enough. I think that it'll be a boxing match just like a heavyweight boxing match punch after punch after punch but I do think that Kelvin Phillips thing him being isolated especially if Leeds press high if Leeds press high and Pep can play through Mm -hmm. they've got a bit of a problem you're thinking players that could come off the line as well and enter that sort of central space I'm going to City to win and I've gone for the big one over 5.5 goals in this game. Is that a misprint, surely? No, no, that, that, we are going for this. You need to stop what you're doing when Leeds are playing Man City this weekend. Just stop it. Just get to the TV, watch the game, because it's going to be an absolute banger. That's 11 to 1. Great odds there as well. Let's move on to free super tips. Bet builder for this game, over 3.5 goals. Again, slightly conservative, guys. I expected a little bit more from you this week. Leeds double tra- chance draw. We've got to talk about that. I mean... That I is... Mean, uh, of course. It's ambitious. It is ambitious, but Leicester I mean, City just beat them 5-2. Yeah. Man City. Yeah, well, yeah, I can see I'm not, I can see the reason. I just think... Mm, I can see a big response from City, put it that way. Yeah, that's, I kind of that's, expect that's something big coming. Bamford to score any time is you know, probably the best of any Leeds players. He's three goals so far in the Premier League. He's looking really good. He's, the other one I was looking at, actually, was Jack Harrison, but he's unavailable for this game because yeah. the parent club is Manchester City for him. Mm-hmm. But he's been another player that's looked really good in Bielsa's system. Unavailable. I think that could cause him a bit of problems. I think if you're a wide player in a Bielsa system, you're always thinking, you know, mm. I can really get involved in how, in the way we play here. And I think you, you know the look at the overlaps that he's doing and how much he pushes on, retains his position as well quite high up. Um, and I think he's, you know, we saw him with the assist as well for Bamford. And yeah. Bamford's movement's excellent. So if, you, if you're somebody who's looking to put crosses in, Bamford's great because he's, he's in between centre-backs around, he's moving, he's never stood still. So he, he's a great target for somebody. So you're back in the bet then. Leeds oh, double chance Bamford to score over three points. I like this. I'm, I'm on board with Bamford. <laughs> That's so, yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah, we could all be on board with it. So after that absolute corker of a game, um, the game I'm going to recommend not to watch this weekend <laughs> is Newcastle versus Burnley. This is what I've got written down on the notes as the under 2.5 goals derby of the weekend. Uh, Burnley were involved in three shots on target in the game against Southampton and Newcastle didn't have a shot on target from open play. Of course, their goal coming from the penalty spot. Mm-hmm. Am I under talk in this game? No, no, I think it's ominous. I think those stats are definitely ominous and uh, I think it's going to happen in this game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe VAR can rescue us. There's obviously a big decision in the Newcastle game. What did you make of that? Do we need to change the rules? <sighs> yeah, I think we do. I really, I, I, I don't see it happening because if you look on the continent, you look at France, you look at Italy, you look at Spain, it's been there for a while. And don't get me wrong, people aren't happy, but I think the idea of it just being put out the window straight away just as they are trying to integrate it is you know it's very ambitious I don't see it happening it's good. this is here to stay unfortunately yeah, I think the weird side of it is it number one you, you play from the armpit up yep. with the arm yep. and number two you can't have your bodies outside the silhouette of your you know you can't have your arms outside the silhouette of your body yep. which means you can't really jump and I think that is the problem that yep. we're having right now which is because ridiculous. jumping in a yep. natural position you're raising your arms and that's how Eric Dyer got caught out in that game yeah so hopefully we'll have some VAR controversy in this game that can get it nice and entertaining mm-hmm. Bets wise, please don't tell me you've gone over 5.5 goals. I have not, no. Okay, so we're going with them. <laughs> you see, this is perfect. This is why you're going to definitely score this weekend. Match draw. Great result. I think that's going to be a Newcastle Burnley result, a nil nil draw, under 2.5 mm-hmm. goals as well. I've kind of gone with exactly the same due to the shots on target. Yeah. Let's take a look at my bets as well because uh, they're not very pretty for this yeah. game. We've gone over 2.5 goals and we've gone draw Burnley double chance. <laughs> So we're not look, you know, it's not we're not pushing this game as an absolute classic. Let's have a look at FST's bet builder as well. They've gone Burnley draw double chance half time result draw on the two point five goals in the game. <laughs> oh yeah, no, maybe that's the one where you go out and uh, you go and get yourself your dinner or you go to the shop and do your <laughs> weekly shopping. Um, next up, let's talk about Leicester City West Ham. I think that could be quite an interesting one. Mm-hmm. You think in West Ham, quite impressive against Wolves that four 0 win. Yeah, they look a little bit better than, but I don't think they're good enough to win this game. No, mm. I, I kind of I kind of agree with that. Mm. I thought Mikel Antonio, though, although he didn't get a goal or an assist, mm-hmm. 
really did well oh, against he, Wolves as back three. He's got such a focal point role on that side, mm. you know, so, so he's very at home, you know, and, and it's a great target for people as well if they know that that person's up there who can hold up the ball. Susek brings somebody like Susek yeah. into play as well, who, who's starting to grow as well. And you can see, you know, they didn't pay much money for him. No, bargain. Yeah, it seems to be these players they don't pay much money for West Ham. <laughs> the work, Sebastian Allen sitting on the bench for 40 million yeah. quid. I think Jared Bowen as well, two goals last yeah. week. I yeah. thought he... He impressed me last back in the last season. I watched him against Manchester United at Old Trafford, mm-hmm. and he, he had something about him. Yeah, he's a good player. I think he's got a lot of skill about him, but yeah. also I think he puts in, you know, he's got hard work. He's, he's definitely a Premier League level player, absolutely. Absolutely. So we're looking, you know, West Ham impressive, mm-hmm. but not impressive as Leicester City. Again, yeah. that 100% record. I thought how they dismantled Pep's seat team with that 3 4 2 1. Harvey Barnes has been someone, you know, Vardy's getting all the headlines, but Harvey Barnes is a player yeah. that every time I watch him, Always seen a little bit else to it. You know, something else has been added to his game. Mm-hmm. Thought against City, his direct dribbling was really good. Yep. Oh, I think he's added a lot since he came to the side. If you look, he's he's been an upgrade on Ayothe Perez. Oh, I think in, in terms, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, in terms of what he offers, he's got a goal scoring threat as well. Yeah. So, so like you say, I think you look at how he links up their attack, um, and it gives Vardy another energetic presence in attack as well. And I think it gives that Vardy that position as well. You know, we saw with the through ball they played yeah. for that penalty that he can spin, knowing that Barnes has got that ability and that awareness. Just one last stat on Harvey Barnes, of course, in terms of midfielders in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Only Salah and Mane have had more shots on him. So he's a player that could be on the score sheet. Is he in your bet? Have you slipped Harvey Barnes in? We put him in last week and he didn't score after scoring the week before. So not this time. Then we're going with Leicester half-time, full-time. So you're thinking a dominant yeah. Leicester display. Uh, and Vardy any time. Yep, absolutely. I can see Leicester just starting brightly again, building up what they've done so far. Getting the game over and done by half time, I think. You know, it, it does depend whether David Moyes is going to be there, though. In pre- you know, it does because <laughs> West Ham looks a bit better with David Moyes at home. Maybe David Moyes needs to be in his command centre, computer out, getting all the stats there. You know what I mean, David? Uh, Vardy, stat for you here: most penalties won in the Premier League this season, there you go. three so far. So, if Vardy's going to be, you know, the thing with Vardy it hasn't quite come alive for me. Mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff that he's done well is generally winning penalties. Yeah, he hasn't really taken as many shots as you'd expect. He hasn't got into as mm-hmm. many good positions, bar, of course, the, the wonderful flick. That was yep. a sensational goal. Mm-hmm. But it feels like he's not doing like the basic things, like getting the ball in certain areas and having a crack at goal. I think now he's got those goals. Confidence. We'll op- yeah, we'll open something up for him. He's like, oh, all right, might start taking a pot. So I think you've been a bit conservative. I've got a little bit more AWOL here. Leicester to win the game, Vardy, any time. Over 3.5 goals. Mm. I think when you're looking at James Madison's back in the side as well. Spoke about Barnes being in the mood. And Didi potentially back in midfield. Mm. Justin and Castagnet at fullback look really, really good. I just can't look past So you look like 3-1 three, three, or something like that. 3-1, yeah, one, yeah, yeah, one, yeah. maybe a 4-2. Yeah. I think there'll be goals in this game as well. Now let's take a look at free super tips. Bet builder as well, because those guys usually get it right. Leicester to win the game by two or more goals. Vardy to score any time and over 2.5 mm-hmm. in the match. So we're all back in Leicester City. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're all on the same page here. I do like the over <laughs> t- you know, two or more goals. I think yeah. Leicester are in form. They are scoring goals. Mm-hmm. And it is that penalty threat from Jamie Vardy that we've... We can't ignore due to the rules. Yeah, I was going to say the penalties are going to be such a big factor this season, I think, with, with any of these bets, you know, so it's something we have to you know, keep in mind. We do have to keep in mind. So we spoke about Leicester City. Next mm-hmm. up, we've got Southampton versus West Brom, which could be a good game, could be a bad game. I think it's one of those games where both sides kind of kick-started their campaign last time out. Yeah. Southampton taking a 1-0 win over Burnley and, of course, West Brom scoring three in the epic 3-3 draw. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a turning point for both teams? I think both. I think they're both good sides. I think they've both got things about them. I think they've both got individuals who can change games in an instance. You know, you look at Pereira with uh, West Brom, and I think Southampton's got several players. You know, I'm really liking Che Adams this season, as we'll, we'll see in a minute. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> very, yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah, so I think there's a few exciting factors here. It's not quite Burnley Newcastle. It's not quite Burnley Newcastle. <laughs> We're a little bit <laughs> level above, and I agree. Che Adams and Danny Ings look like they've got a bit of a, a yeah. partnership together. I've got a stat yeah. for you for, for Danny Ings right now. Since the start of last season, only Jamie Vardy scored more Premier League goals than Danny Ings, mm-hmm. who's managed 25 Mm -hmm. then he said 28 it was 25 (laughs) in that time he's in the form of his life yeah how do you deal with Danny Ings because he seems such an explosive player good in the air good in the channels again it's confidence with him and also he's a very very good player you've got to remember you know Liverpool picked him up and then unfortunately that injury derailed his career but now he's back on track again he's in a place where I think he's the main man as well you know, and he was the same when he was at Burnley and so impressive again. He was the main man there. Everybody supplying the boats for him. I think in pre-season, uh, Southampton put a lot on getting Adams near him and just give him a bit more support, not making sure he's so isolated. So that's why I really, really like what's going on with them two at the moment. So we've got to take a look at your bet now because you're mentioning Che Adams over and over again. Mm. He's got to be in there to score any time. Yep. So he's quite highly ranked in terms of you looking at XG. The underlying stats for Che Adams are quite good. Yep. 
Um, you know, he's due a goal in this in this sort of sense. And Southampton to win, you think it'll be too good for West Brom? Oh, I think so, absolutely, yeah. I think the quality will come through. Probably one of those games where it's a bit of a, a harsh lesson for West Brom, you know, since they've come up. They're one of the ones that they'll look and think, oh, this is a game we could potentially win. But I think Southampton just got that little bit extra quality in, in now. So I think the better results are going to come for Southampton in the next few weeks. Yeah, I completely agree there. My bets are kind of the, the same now. I've got Southampton to win to nil, over 2.5 goals in the game. I think that, like you mentioned, Adams and... Yep. Uh, Ings are going to be up there. They've got good defensive underlying stats as well, Southampton, so that's kind of why I've gone to mm-hmm. nil. I kind of expect another clean sheet. Yep. Uh, I think they've done quite well in that sort of capacity so far. So let's take a look at FST's bet builder for this game. We've got Southampton to win the game. Uh, Southampton over 1.5 team goals. Danny Ings has goal first, interestingly. Mm-hmm. Does get a lot of early goals. And both teams to score, yes, 10 to 1. Great odds there. Yep. So now it's time for the battle of back threes. Arsenal with Arteta, of course, versus Chris Wilder, Sheffield United. Arsenal had three minutes of joy against Liverpool. Yep. Obviously, Lacazette capitalising on that Robertson. Bit of a defensive mistake. But then they end up chasing the shadows. It's got to be a big game for Arteta. They drew 1-1 um, at home at the Emirates against Sheffield United under Arteta. Mm-hmm. Surely this is the game that they've got to pick up the three points. Yeah, absolutely. I don't even think they were particularly bad against Liverpool. My timeline was just slandering them, bro. I, I was I was really really surprised because I thought I think they nearly they were quite close, and then obviously Liverpool's quality just separated in the end. You know, look at like Azet Smith's ch- chances as yeah. well were absolutely appalling. That would have pulled them back, mm. and then we don't know how they would have responded after that. Obviously, again, Liverpool were excellent that game, and, and they deserved the win, absolutely. But I think Arsenal, again, as we all know, they're on the right track as a club as a team so I can see them just winning this one as well I think it is an interesting one I thought Liverpool controlled the game in phases really well but you mentioned the high line there was times where they were playing over the top Arteta had a great plan to, to get yeah. behind I think we've got to give him a lot of credit there yeah. Sheffield United on the other hand though they're, they're suffering a little bit of second season syndrome already mm-hmm. would you say yeah potentially And this game, but this game could you know, it could help them a bit because we know how much they put their wing backs on and how much they push up and I noticed there's just a few gaps in behind Bayerine and t- Turney at the, against Liverpool could Sheffield United expose that I think one thing Sheffield United may need to do is get a goal scorer <laughs> in the window. But let's take a look at your bets for the game because they can't buy any. Well, they might be able to buy someone before the game, but it's going to yep. be a bit difficult. So we've gone under 3.5 goals in the match and most goals in the second half. So a slow affair that yep. speeds up in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, Arsenal had a you know a high-energy, you know, emotional game against Liverpool, I think. Yeah. So it's going to take them time. They might start a little bit sluggish here, but I think they eventually get into their groove. And who knows, a few changes as well, you know, you could see in that side. So... Yeah, yeah, I can see Arsenal seeing this one through in the end. Fair. Well, I've, I've kind of gone with a, with a similar thing. I've, I've backed Arsenal from the start with mm-hmm. a Bemiang any time, but I'm going to go with a draw. Oh, okay. I think the punches will be taken. I think you're looking at a Bemiang. Martinelli scored uh, against Sheffield United at the Emirates from like, a sort of a left wing position. So that's why I'm going to go with a Bemiang to score from that flank, cutting inside behind that back three, stretching them. But overall, I think that Sheffield United. I've got quite a bit, yeah, in terms of personality. Yeah. I think this will shine here. And I think this could be a game that kind of starts some moving up the table. Yeah. Let's take a look at FS Tips uh, for their bet builder as well. Got Arsenal to win the game, Bemiang anytime. Under three goals. So they're kind of yeah. matching you up with the yeah. not many goals in this game. No, no, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a tight KG affair. I think, again, Sheffield and I just aren't really there yet. Arsenal again, smarting just coming off that little game. So both sides, we've, so yeah, it's absolutely see under three goals. So let's move on to Wolverhampton. Wolves against Fulham. The surprise result, of course, of game week three was that 4-0 defeat to West Ham United. Surely Nuno's men can't do the same against Fulham, who have been poor, to say the least. You'd have to think so. I mean, if they could just skip straight to the second half, then, you know, I think they might have been. <laughs> right. Yeah, because we know what they are like in first halves. It's, it's incredible. Like, we still don't really have an explanation as to, as to why that is. Maybe a little bit more cagey in first halves again. But you expect a big, big response here. You, you really do. I think the way that Michael Antonio bullied the defence, yeah. Saiz, Connor Cody, who's been so good recently. Yeah, who are two very, very strong combative centre-backs themselves as well. So it was a bit of a surprise in that sense. What a massive surprise. That was a game that completely flipped the form on their head. Yeah. Can Mitrovic do the same, though? Can he be that present? He's, he's, he's got the presence, but maybe not the mobility that they kind of need to move this back three around. That, that's the problem. I watched a lot of Mitrovic and Watkins, last, Ollie Watkins, who was now at Aston Villa mm. last season. I noticed Watkins was a lot more mobile. He had a lot yeah. more about them, pulled defenders apart. Mitrovic is a very good player, don't get me wrong, but you have to supply bullets perfectly for him because he doesn't really move. His movement isn't that good. He doesn't really pull off the, the front line too much. Um, so I think it's a bit more difficult to get him in the game and the way the Fulham are playing. 
Got a bit of a problem. I think Southampton could be perfect. Danny Ings and Mitrovic, that could be a great pairing. (laughs) But we're not talking about transfers right now. Uh, Let's move on to the bets uh, for the game. You know, we've got to go Wolves. Jimenez to score anytime. Uh, And also 2.5 goals in the game. So not looking at a result, but more of what's going to happen in terms of the goals. Yeah, I think it's going to be an emphatic performance. I think they're going to have to come out. I I rate Wolves. I think that was just a one-off. I think they'll gather themselves. Noon all sick. No more of that. And I think we're going to see a very, very high energy performance from Wolves. Maybe try and get a couple of early goals. Yeah, again, my bet kind of reflects that. I've gone Wolves and Jimenez any time. Um, I think you don't get Raul two bad games in a row. Yeah. I think he played very well against no. West Ham. Didn't link the play very well. I think um, P- Pedence as well was missing. Yeah. If he's back for the game, still a bit of an injury doubt. I think that's going to be vitally mm-hmm. important. He's already assisted two goals from him this season. Uh, let's take a look at free super tips. Bet builder as well for the game. Wolves to win to nil. And him and Hez every time. <laughs> so we're on the right path here, guys. We're absolutely smashing it to get involved with one of those, of course, gamble responsibly. Now it's time to talk about the big one. Manchester United versus Spurs. Mourinho back at Old Trafford for the second time. Of course, United won that first game at Old Trafford. Mm-hmm. They were unplayable for the f- first 30 minutes of the game. Rashford leading the attack, getting shots on goal. Do you expect him to be the difference in this game? Obviously a fantastic goal against Brighton as well, last time out. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think that might just you know lift the lid for Rashford and he can go on a bit more confident now. I just want to see him come off that left wing more. I want to see him, you know, I just want to see him come inside a little more, mm. lead the attack, be the main focal point. I think sometimes, you know, if he's situated out on the left, they can't isolate him. So I think, you know, you know, you need to get him back in front of the goal. We need to get him close to goal again. I think that's what you know, Manning United need to see. That's what Alex Sellers is going to do when he joins, um, of course. <laughs> uh, but no, the other thing in terms of Spurs, they've, they've looked really good with Son, with Kane. The, the way that they completely undressed Southampton was fantastic. Yeah. Balls into the feet of Kane. Son running in behind. Mm-hmm. Four goals, four assists for the pair. Uh, but no human Son. Potentially. Hamstring injury. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's a, that's a big, big loss if he does not play. Um, you know, you look at how he... Man United right now, again, one of those teams not quite there in terms of confidence. Who's going to be tracking who? Who's doing that? Who's being the main defensive piece in that midfield? Um, and Son, somebody who could take advantage of that and just find those gaps, find those spaces, which he does so, so well. Steven Bergvine, though, may come in. Of course, mm-hmm. he scored against United after the, the restart. So there's still threat for this Tottenham team. Yeah. Uh, but let's take a look at the bet. So you back mm-hmm. in in this game? Because it could be could go either way. Mm-hmm. I quite like that you've not picked, gone for a team. I think that's no. probably quite a good bet in this environment. Both teams to score Rashford any time. Uh, yeah. Rashford to score first, sorry. Absolutely. I can see this being one of those games, um, especially everything that's going on right now with transfers. Man United maybe draw or lose, and it really cranks up the pressure to get new players in. So I could see it being one of those games. Mm, absolutely. With Marcus Rashford, you, you know, you think in the relationship he had with Jose Mourinho, he's going to be fired up. He was yeah. fired up in the last game. He's going to be fired. Pogba's going to be fired up as yeah. well. Uh, I've backed Manchester United. I just think that is going to be the difference. That mm-hmm. Some of these players have got not great memories of Jose Mourinho yeah, at his yeah. time at the club. So I expect United to fly out and Rashford any time. Rashford gets into these little spells of form, yeah. doesn't he, where yeah. he scores, scores, scores. Then he'll go off a little bit of a barren run. Then he'll score, score, score again. I think he's just in that type of moment right yeah. now. Let's take a look at FST's uh, tips. Bet builder for the game. Yeah. Um, we're going Man United to win the game. Rashford to score any time. Both teams to score. So <laughs> quite similar to Man. Yeah, they've, they've added a little bit of flair at the end. Um, goals could come from Harry Kane. Mm-hmm. He's kind of massively underperforming his XG at the moment, so it could be a guy to, to, to find the, the back of the net. Yeah, there's a few players who can get, again, who can come up with the goods for Spurs in terms of goals as well. So Kane can play that role, absolutely, but there's other players just around him I think can do something. So Could be Gareth Bale. That would be a Mourinho move. <laughs> Gareth Bale starts the game and scores and wins it for uh, Tottenham. Wouldn't be great. So let's move on to our last game of the weekend. Liverpool already looked like champions for me. The performance against City, uh, City, sorry, against Chelsea, against Arsenal, were mm-hmm. they were just very professional. It was just excellent. They, they just never wavered when mm. they went behind. You, know, you can see Liverpool right now. They just they play like champions. You know they have that attitude, that that, that aura about them. I think in games, um, which is something that only comes with success. Um, so yeah, yeah, they're looking excellent at the moment, and you know they they bought so so well. You know you look at if you can bring, bring somebody like Jota off the bench. Yeah. Just to finish off games. That's an upgrade on last season because they had so much trouble last season. No disrespect to Origi, but Jordan is a, 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 you know, it's a much better impact for them to have. Oh, absolutely. You know, a really underrated player yeah. that was underrated. And Liverpool obviously saw the stats, brought him in and having a good time with him. Mm. Now, Villa, on the other hand, have got the best defensive record in the, in the league. Mm. If you told me that two games in at the start, I would not have believed you. But they've conceded uh, you know, one of the fewest goals. They've only mm-hmm. had four shots on target. Yeah. And of course, two clean sheets. So do you think Liverpool are going to have enough for that? I think it's not going to be as easy as, as you think. I think, you know, you bring it up really, really well. I think Villa's got a really, really good goalkeeper now, Martinez. I really, really like Douglas Lewis as well. I don't well. know why the Liverpool, at Liverpool, Arsenal let him yeah. go. Yeah, it was, it's a strange one. So, yeah, yeah they've got Martinez, they've got Douglas Lewis, yeah. who I think just sits in front of that defence. Very, very smart player. 
So I think Liverpool's going to come into the game and they can't underestimate uh, Villa at the moment. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the bets for the game. Um, starting with your bets, under 3.5 goals in the game. Salah to score any time. I like the Salah, sh Salah show. Yep. I think Mane has taken the last two games yep. where he's been the guy. He's been the focal point. Yeah. He's been the guy making things happen. But Salah has been excellent. You know, it just, that's, it, again, that's the thing, isn't he's it? He's one of those players where you can just see it's just yeah. it's about to happen. It's bubbling away. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think, you know, the, the, the goal that Mane scored was just Mohamed Salah. Brilliant. That, the absolutely. pace and the strength that he had to go around Tierney was sensational. Yeah. He's also had 17 shots so far in the Premier League, four more than any other player. I think it's his turn. It's I coming. think it's his turn. I completely agree with that. Yep. Under 3.5. So you think yep. it could be quite cautious? Well, Villa's defensive yep. record Villa's defense, does, yeah. does state that. And of course, Liverpool need to improve their defensive record as well. Yep. Um, so, you know, I quite like that as well. Mm. I'm, I'm slightly different. I'm backing Liverpool. Uh, backing Mohamed Salah to score for the reasons just mentioned. Both teams to score. Kind of think that there is a little bit of creakiness in the Liverpool team. We saw Lacazette right, okay. getting behind. Yeah. You could potentially be uh, you know, looking at someone like Ollie Watkins yeah, yeah. to make that same move. Mm -hmm. Liverpool to win the game, though, I thought you know, they were sensational, especially in midfield against their Arsenal. They misplaced just six passes from their starting midfield. So Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Naby Keita, which was mm -hmm. sensational. So I'm going with that. So let's take a look at FST's bet builder for this game. We've got Liverpool to win the game, Liverpool to score in both halves, and Mane. So they're going Mane to uh, score, which is fair. Because again, <laughs> rating them by XG, Mane is above Salah right now, yeah. but you know, we kind of gone the other way, so it's going to be good mm -hmm. to see free super tips bet build coming in this time. Well, that is that for this week's bet building. We've had a lot of fun for game week four in the Premier League. David Cartilage, where can we find your work? You can find me over at ESPN or follow me on Twitter at David Jagger. Absolutely fantastic, guys. Gamble responsibly, of course. We want to bet back any of our bets for this week, and we'll be back next time to build some more bets. <laughs> <laughs>